Welcome. I hope that everyone had a Merry Christmas filled with hope, peace, joy, and love. I know for all of us, these traditions that we've been used to over the years were a lot different this year, designed to protect our family and friends during the pandemic. I know that God is still with us this Christmas, and his love, as always, endures and provides us hope for a new way forward. I'm Barb Duffin, and I'm a member of the Worship and Music Committee, and I'm honoured to be leading the service this morning to give our minister, Reverend Carrie Stover, a well-deserved break. I'm so pleased to be sharing today a service with several leaders of the Neighbourhood Care Network. If you're unfamiliar with this group of community leaders, during today's service, I'm sure you will have a chance to learn more about this special group and feel God's presence. We are blessed to have Matt Foxell from Kerr Street Mission and John Berg and Dave Freeman from our congregation to help with this service today and as they work as a part of the Neighbour Care Network. They will share how they bring God's love to those in need, and I'm sure you will also learn how you can help the Neighbour Care Network with their mission. I also want to thank the other key members of our worship team, Dr. Deborah Henry, Aaron Rosen, and our Chancel Choir, as well as our technical expert, Al Weebel, J.C. Barabee, and Joan Vinyl Cox. It is a spirit-led collaboration, so you can experience where the spirit soars and the heart finds a home. Please feel free to forward this service to any of your family and friends and to make a comment on our website to acknowledge the people that work so hard to put these services together. Friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude
Let us pray. We gather together in this time of worship as God brings us the promise of new life in Christ, which is like a breath of fresh air at this time of human struggle. And we gather in your name to seek your love, guidance, and hope during our worship service. Please join me in the prayer of approach shown on the screen, and the bold text is your response. Let us remember, it is not us who chooses Christ, but Christ who chooses us. Let us open our hearts to God's love. We are not here because of our own goodness, but because of God's grace. Let us open our hearts to God's love. We are not here to enlighten ourselves, but to allow Christ to enlighten us. Let us open our hearts to God's love. We are not here to be entertained, but to come together in community to worship God with our open hearts and minds. Amen. Let us raise up our voices in praise by singing our opening hymn, On to Us a Boy is Born. Voices United, number 57. Let us enter into a time of confession. Dear God, sometimes we forget or we toss away people who don't look like us or have a different needs or who are difficult to spend time with. And sometimes when we do these things, it's not really about the other people, but about us. We are fearful and uncomfortable, or maybe we feel guilty, and it's just easier to spend time with people who are like us. God, we are in need of your forgiveness and your grace. Help us to value what you value and bravely face our fears, to be more like you and to truly open our hearts to loving all people equally, whether they're like us or not. Help us to truly love all in our community. In Christ we pray. Amen. Jesus was born, Jesus died, and he rose from the grave. In doing so, we are forgiven for our wrongful ways. As forgiven people, let us say the great prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The reading is from Micah 6, 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. May God's spirit move through these words. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26, Jesus calls the first disciples the parable of the paralyzed man. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then some men came, carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles in the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, Stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately, he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. For the word of God amongst us, thanks be to God. Father will give him kingdom. 
My name is John Berg, and I'm the coordinator for Neighbor Care Network here at Maple Grove United Church. A few words about Neighbor Care Network. We're an outreach program that looks to provide a hand up for those less fortunate who have, been, who have the motivation and desire to improve their situation. In the last four years, we have been there to help 18 families on their journey to reach their objectives whether that's about housing or furniture or clothes or legal advice, transportation, dental care, financial, um, plus we provide friendship and support. Each case is unique and the objectives are varied, but we work with each client to identify and provide that help that is necessary at that time. Assignments can be short or longer term. Sometimes the client moves on to continue their journey. Other times they stay with us or we see them after we've actually completed our work. We stay in touch and try to provide support. As one of our workers said, they became friends. I'd like to recognize the people at Maple Grove who do the work for Neighbor Care Network here. Gay Loveland, Jean Ann Davis, Brenda Lewis, Pat Aston, Jim Lilly, Judy Lilly, Gloria Tomlinson, Kathy Dodge Smith, Darlene Morden, and Chrissy Kahn. Here are a few comments from their involvement. I asked for their feedback so that we could um, so that you could learn what type of work they do. One said, we want to give back and pay it forward through direct contact with NCN clients. It is an opportunity to get to know them and understand what kind of support they really need. Another, I would describe the work as interesting, sometimes challenging, sometimes frustrating, but always rewarding. And finally, I joined to find a way to help those in need. I'm impressed with the efficiency of the program and the training. It is also a nice way to keep in touch with fellow maple grovers. You are invited to contact any one of the names I listed before or myself if you want to learn more about Neighbor Care Network and the work that we do. The last verse that was in my Bible reading includes a phrase to act just, justly. I think the call for me was the fact that is to act, to do something to help. I'm also here to introduce Matt Foxall, who's the person from Kerr Street Mission who runs the Neighbor Care Network. Um, and as Neighbor Care Network, it's a partnership between the Kerr Street Mission and several churches in the Halton region, including Maple Grove. Matt will tell you more about that work. Prior to taking on this role, Matt worked for seven years within the Presbyterian Church on doing mission work. Matt has two daughters, Acadia at eight and Piper at five. And Matt 
ends his little resume by saying that he's a diehard Maple Leafs fan and season ticket holder. I've seen Matt host a very successful fundraiser for NCN. I've seen him learn that he'd received, obtained a, a free Appleby scholarship for a daughter of one of our clients. And I've seen him move boxes and clean apartments, so he can do it all. Matt, I'd like to welcome you to Maple Grove Church. Thank you. So thank you, John, for that uh, warm introduction. It's a pleasure to be here once again uh, in the sanctuary of Maple Grove uh, United. Just over a year ago, I had the extreme pleasure of preaching here and sharing with all of you uh, about the Neighbor Care Network, its foundation in scripture, and the amazing work it has been doing in the community. This year, of course, I'm extremely grateful to be back again to preach about the importance of NCN. However, obviously it looks and feels a lot different. Since the last time we were together, a lot has changed in the world. A global pandemic has crippled countries around the world, and it has forced us all to learn new ways of communicating and reaching people, and has changed the way in which we do church. While I'm here in your sanctuary recording this sermon in advance of its presentation with only a few people with me, what is still very clear to me is that, the, that despite all the changes we have seen in a year, this world needs the church now more than ever. Two weeks ago, I found myself in my new pandemic Sunday morning routine. I was at home with my two daughters curled up in our jammies and tuning into our local church service via live stream. This has now become pretty much the norm for us on Sunday mornings, and even now, even after eight months, it still feels pretty weird. But that day was a lot different. Shortly after our service wrapped up, my phone rang. I looked at my call display to see that it was from my office colleague, Michelle, and my heart sank. You see, Michelle and I have a great relationship, which means that I know all too well that if my phone is ringing, it is most likely bad news that is about to be delivered. And I was right. As soon as I picked up my phone, there was silence followed by quiet sobbing. For the fourth time during this pandemic, Kerr Street Mission and the Neighbor Care Network had just learned of the tragic passing of one of our clients, Steve, who had been a stalwart in our community going back decades. It was in my reflection since his passing that I share his story with you this morning, not only to honor his memory and those we have lost during this time, but to also show the importance of the Neighbor Care Network in our community and the vital role of the church. When I got the call from Michelle about Steve's heart attack and passing, there was a lot of mixed emotions. Due to his past and the way he chose to live his life, we knew all too well that this would be how his story would end someday. We knew we would get a call, much like we, had, uh, much like we did, but we just didn't expect it to be so soon. If you ever had the chance to meet him, you would remember him for his ability to always find a way to make you laugh, or his knack for always being ready to lend a hand, no matter what. His heart was always in the right place, and that is what I always valued in my relationship with him. He truly was a good guy who had tremendous potential in life. The problem was, Steve had his demons, mainly alcohol and drugs, brought on by decades of untreated trauma from when he was younger and his inability to adapt to change and get the help he truly needed. This forced him into a cycle of poverty that he could not get out of, despite the later in life attempts from Kerr Street Mission and the Neighbor Care Network. I first met Steve when I started at KSM a little over two and a half years ago. He was homeless, living in a tent in the forest by Oakville Town Hall behind the McDonald's. He was on Ontario Works, receiving a little over $300 a month to survive. He relied on Kerr Street Mission for food, for clothes, for the use of our showers, and more importantly, the community and friendship 
the building had to offer. We saw him almost every day. Despite our attempts to get him back on his feet and our passion to try and make a difference in Steve's life, he had become so used to the way uh, that he had lived his life that he didn't want to change. He passed away still living in that tent in the forest by town hall of his own choosing, always with a smile on his face. So how does one make a difference in someone's life? More so, how can you measure the impact you have on someone who is struggling and can't seem to get their life back on track? This is the age-old question we, as an organization, have asked ourselves time and time again. Our response was the Neighbor Care Network. As many of you already know, NCN was created as a response to the ongoing uh, increase in clients that are in distress and crisis in the community, whose problems and issues fell outside the normal parameters of just needing food or some programming for children and youth. Many were following through the, or falling through the gaps in our governmental systems and needed support. We realized though that we could not tackle these issues alone. We needed the help of not only the community, but specifically the church communities in Halton Region to make this program a success. We, as a church, are challenged by God to do better in the world. This is a challenge I take very personally. We heard God challenge us this morning in our Old Testament reading, in Micah chapter six, or chapter 6, verses 6 to 8, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. When I was here last year, I used the parable of the sheep and the goats to illustrate this call. This time around, though, I wanted to take a more tangible approach, one that actually would show you the model of care we try to establish with our participants day in and day out. You heard in the New Testament reading this morning from Luke about how God heals a paralyzed man who was brought to him by some men. What I want to focus on in the story is the role of those some men, because ultimately they are how we see the neighbor care network working in our community. Luke does not tell us much about these aides in the story. They could be his friends. They could be neighbors. They could simply be random people who decided to help a man get the support that he felt he needed. The heart of the matter is that without these men, the story doesn't have the powerful ending. It does. Much like the some men in our story, the NCN community strives to not be recognized uh, or to take away from the accomplishment of the individuals and families it is helping. It is a conduit, a facilitator to help people get the help and support they need. Every one of our participants struggles with loneliness, isolation, and the feeling of being overwhelmed. Our volunteers and the network as a whole functions at a distance so that when called upon, they can help support these participants to make hard decisions that they could not do on their own. When the some men encountered the crowd and other issues with getting the paralyzed man to Jesus, they problem solved. They were innovative, they were resourceful, and they didn't give up. This is the Neighbor Care Network. In the midst of a global pandemic, we have seen firsthand how fragile our society is. This is even more true for those living under the poverty line. We have reported an increase in services by over 40% since March, and more and more people are coming in weekly, needing more than just food. They need the church communities and the neighbor care network to be those advocates in the community to hopefully bring about real change in their situations. While I know most churches are still online and not meeting in public, this does not mean that we cannot make a difference. In fact, I think now is actually the best time for the church communities to reach out and say, here I am, and work outside of our own walls and support and rally the community together. 
Now is the time to make a difference in the lives of those who need it the most. Steve's loss for us was a tragic one, to not only myself, but to everybody in our community that knew him best. But his story is so important to tell. When I met him, he was past the point of no return. There was really no changing him, no matter how much love and support he had. He was always destined to remain set in the ways, set in his ways, and living in a tent in a forest. But that didn't mean, though, that he didn't feel the love and support of the community around him. He knew, despite his circumstances, that he was loved, cared for, and supported by a community of people who did it not for the accolades, but because they just wanted to make a difference. In my conversations since his passing with those that knew him best, one thing was made very clear. Had a program like the Neighbor Care Network existed in the community when Steve's traumas had first begun, there would have been a way better chance that his life would have turned out a lot different. We all have the power to make an impact on someone in the smallest of ways every day. And like those people who help support the paralyzed man, you never know how that one small act of kindness or generosity can change someone's life forever. God works in mysterious ways, and we hope you will continue to join us on this journey that we have been called to. Let us be a servant people, serving others, and in so doing, serving Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of thanks and asking. Last summer, I led a service, and in preparing For this part of the service, I reached out to my family and my kids and asked them to help me put the prayer of thanks and asking together. When I was preparing for this service, I felt that that same prayer had meaning, and I wanted to share it with you again. There's a response for you shown in bold on the text on the screen. God, we come to you today humble and grateful for all the blessings you've provided us, We are thankful to you for the privilege of praying for our family, our friends, our community, and our world. God, hear our prayers. God, we name in our hearts our loved ones that are facing illness and surgery. We pray that you will bring strength and healing love to give hope and courage to those suffering. Please provide calm when they are afraid and comfort for their pain surrounding them with your peace. God, hear our prayers. We pray for those feeling powerless and fearful about their own personal health and safety due to COVID. We pray for those suffering from mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless. We reach out to those suffering from addiction and for those who have lost loved ones due to overdose. May they feel your steadfast love and presence to comfort their pain. We pray for those in our communities who are feeling small and vulnerable during this difficult time. We pray for the homeless who are unable to practice the protocols of social distancing in the shelter system, and we pray for the marginalized black indigenous communities whose vulnerabilities open them up to, to, to so much greater risk of contracting COVID. Provide your loving, healing strength and protect those so vulnerable from illness. God, hear our prayers. We pray for workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship. We reach out to those facing eviction. God, keep them from panic and give them hope. God, hear our prayers. We pray for those risking their personal safety to fight for justice, equality, freedom, and democracy throughout the world. May they have courage, remaining steadfast to fight for the rights of the vulnerable. We pray for government leaders that are not protecting their people. May your love bring peace and understanding. God, hear our prayers. Amen. Let us go to prepare for a new year with God's love, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
On behalf of Maple Grove United Church, we wish you all a wonderful and safe and happy new year. Please join us in singing our closing hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Voices United, number 48, and enjoy our postlude. Thank you. <laughs>